Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video and it's another video I'm doing with my brother Paul. Now he's been given this device here which is a CD player and it is completely dead. Now probably not cost effective to fix this because I think you can buy them second hand on eBay for around £20. It's just that it's in really good condition, the lady that owns it is really used to it so she, she likes it. So we're going to see if we can fix it for her. Now it is completely dead so when you plug it in nothing's happening at all. So let's just plug it in just to uh, show you that it's not working. Right, so we're plugged in now, and if you have a look, let's see how this thing works. So, on. And there's no light there at all. So nothing happens when you hit any of the buttons. There's nothing on the display. Yeah, so that's the uh, radio, tape, and CD. It's completely dead, so it's like there's no power getting into it. So let's do some basic fault finding to begin with. We're going to see if... We've either got 240 volts at the end of the lead, or it might be safer just to check for continuity. And then if the lead checks out okay, then maybe it might be worth swapping the lead out, just in case the end contacts of the lead might have gone a little bit wide, so you know, like the female parts in the, uh, in the end of the lead. And then if the second lead doesn't work on it, we're gonna have to take it apart and have a look in the inside and see if we can see anything obvious, or at least maybe trace the voltages around the place. So uh, let's get started. Right, and as well as that, forgot to mention that apparently the batteries leaked in this as well, and this is no longer working. So normally when you press these buttons, a little light lights up, but nothing's happening there either. So if we get this working, then we have to look into this as well. So first things first, let's try and test continuity on here. So yes, you can plug this in, and then you can put your meter to AC, and you can test in here. But I think a safe way of doing it is that we're just going to check for continuity between these pins here and these pins here. So we're gonna to go to continuity there. Right, okay, so we're not gonna know which sides what are we. Okay, so there's continuity there, but not on that one. And there's continuity there. So that says to me that the fuse in here is okay and the wires probably are intact enough in here. But what might not be right is if you look very closely in here, it's going to be hard to see because of the light but it does feel a little bit loose when you plug it into the back so i think it's unlikely but it's definitely worth swapping the lead out just in case because when we plug this into here there is but there's not much it's pretty good really but there is a little bit of play but i'm just going to use the lead from my camera because that's the same and then we can try that you never know it might be a really easy fix so you can see here this one here Might be different, is it? Make it slightly different, Vince. Is no, it? no, it goes in, it goes okay. in, it's just stiff. Yeah. Right, here we go. So, no, so there's definitely nothing there because there's no light coming on here on standby. Right, okay, so unfortunately it's not that, so we're going to have to take this apart and see what's wrong. I'm wondering if there's some kind of internal fuse or something like that. So let's get the, the toolkit ready and get this apart. Now, just remembered, obviously this thing can take batteries as well, so just in case it's purely a problem with the AC power into it, let's try the batteries and see if it then livens up and then we'll have more to go on. Right, again, there's absolutely no power here at all. And it's not going to be a 40 switch, is it? Because that should light up, just the very fact it's got power. Shouldn't it? Uh, I don't know. See, so it says on and standby, so I presume it's either on, green, or maybe it's red all the time if it's off. Yeah, I think pushing it, if it was working, you would definitely get a light coming on anyway. You'd get some. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so it doesn't look like it's a battery issue either, so 100% we're going to have to open this up. Right, so we've got plenty of screws here. They've given us little arrows to show where to uh, do it anyway, so it's nice and easy. So let's pop them out. See if that's going to come apart. Yep, there we go. Right, let's see what pops out of that. There we go. Right, we have to be careful now. Can we take the batteries so out. We've taken the batteries out. Have we taken the batteries out? Did we? I 
think so. Yeah, oh, we did, yeah. yeah. Right, that. so let's undo this connector here. There's a little connector here because the, these are the wires going to the battery. Oh, hold on a minute. Is this where it gets converted then to lower voltage? Yes. So everything's coming down here, yeah? Yeah. Right. So we should be able and to just... And there's another wire here, which is the aerial. aerial. Yeah. So we should be able to... Let's undo that. We should be able to test here Sold for voltage, there. and then we know... Sold it on there. Let's undo. Let's undo this. There's a little screw here. Well done, that's it. Right, so we're free. Okay, so it looks like it's been pat tested in the past. Next test due 07. Right, uh, so I think should we should we plug the batteries or the mains back in and see if we're having voltage here? Because then we know whether this section's okay. Because look, everything, everything gets converted here, doesn't it? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, should we just do batteries to begin with? Because it's going to be safe. It's going to be safe. Yep. So we should have how many? There's eight batteries there, so we should have twelve volts, shouldn't we? Yeah. Twelve volts. So we're just going to go on to these two here. What colour is what? Not that it matters. So it's black this way. So let's see if we've got anything here. I'm hoping we have, otherwise it's going to be a bit of a pain, isn't it? Excellent. What we have, we've got 12.49 volts there. Is it even worth trying with the AC? It's not, is it? Well, because well, we could do, just, yeah, why not? Yeah, okay. You can put the AC in while the batteries are in there, can't you? I believe so. Well, I'll tell you what, just, just to prove it, let's just take the batteries out. But it wasn't working with batteries uh, when, when we did it, so... Uh, Because I need to return these batteries to the shop I bought them for. <laughs> Get your uh, £150 back. That's <laughs> that paid for them. <laughs> Just make sure we get a bit of use out of them first. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's plug in the AC. Oh, I haven't mentioned it in this video. Don't copy what you see in this video. We're not professionals at this. So uh, there might be things that we were doing that are incorrect and also dangerous as well. Obviously, we don't intend to do anything dangerous, but when you're messing around with anything, that's, for example, 240 volts, then obviously there is a risk involved. So we're going to plug this into the back. We're going to keep our hands well away from everything on the inside apart from that little low-voltage connector. Yeah, so I'm just going to go straight onto it. Be careful there. I'm going to go straight onto here. And, oh, that's interesting, that's 17 volts. Right, okay. Okay, well, let's turn that off. So does that mean that there's some kind of regulator in here that probably will work whether it's between 12 and maybe 20 volts or something, or 12 and 17 volts? Or do you think that maybe 17 volts has gone into it and fried it because maybe something's wrong in here? No, I am. Um I'm not sure what the circuitry is in here, but bear in mind that it's pretty made for different countries. Some countries speak 240 volts, two, it could be those 225, and others could be well up at 245. Yes. So maybe that, that we're pretty got quite, we've got quite high voltage here in the UK, so um, possibly oh, so that, that's if being reflected in what's going If in. it was 220 going in, maybe we might only have 12 here maybe or 13 more than 12, or 12, but yeah. Yeah, yes, okay, yeah, okay. Possibly. Sure. And I don't know if the circuitry regulates that. Be honest, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But anyway, uh, as far as we're concerned, I mean, definitely with the batteries anyway, because the, the batteries are 8 times 1.5 volts, and you've seen they were coming up as 12 point something. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm thinking that this side of it is absolutely fine. So, let's put that to one side. Now, let's have a look in here and see what's going on. So, the first thing to look at, I suppose, would be this little white connector. Let's zoom in a bit. I think the first thing to look at would be this little white connector to make sure that it is connected, which it is. Uh, and I think just have a visual, should we have a where visual the, look around? Where the on-off switch is as well, really. Oh yeah, the on-off switch, so that goes up. Yeah. That's gonna be this section here. So that's this little board here. Yeah. So that's probably gonna be fed by some kind of ribbon cable. All right. Is that where the on-off switch is there? I don't know, it's my side here, here isn't no, it? No, no, here. Are you there, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, let's have a quick visual look at the board, see if anything's popped out in case it was dropped. But I'm looking and all the cables look to be... 
connected. It looks in pretty good condition, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Right. Quick visual look at the capacitor. Is there any see, fuses in there at all? See if there's uh, any fuses. You think there'd be a fuse somewhere in it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but maybe it's in that side, the back side, rather than. But there's none obvious here. Let's try the other side where I can't see it. Well, just from a visual inspection, I can't see any of those capacitors that look like they're blown or bulged out or anything. Looks like there's a little bit of staining on this one here, but it's uh, it's tiny. It could even be from where there was a bit of glue here originally on that bit there. I can see this thing here. Looks this heat sink looks to be a little bit tiny, little bit corroded. Uh, it's only a heat sink, though, isn't it? Yeah. Right, well I don't think it's going to be a really easy, obvious fix. I think we should pop this board out and then see what's, see what's underneath it because maybe one of these ribbon cables are not connected on the other side because there's different ribbon, cab ribbon cables at the back here that are going off to the other, the other boards underneath. What do you reckon, should we try and take this board out? Uh, yeah, we could do, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right, so it's screw, screw, one here. Yeah, let's get the let's get the boards out of it and then we can No screws at the back where we can't get to it, is there? There is, there's one there, so I don't know so how. So I suppose the whole thing you'd have to come out of the Oh that? what you mean what's take the that what's the thinking behind that then? Well this is all moulded so we can't get to there. Yeah. Unless maybe this whole the black section comes out. Now let's, uh, uh, no, that's Don't all. worry, we'll be able to get it with a little uh, a, a bit uh, and, uh, and pliers. We can just put the bits at the end of pliers and turn it. Okay. We'll, we'll be able to get to that. Let's do the ones we can see. Nice. put two screws out. at the very back here you can see that there's one just here and also there's one hidden behind this big capacitor here and we can't get to it because this isn't its way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just oh, use the not, it's supposed to be I'm going to try and just use the bits here and these pliers here so I'm just going to do that and then uh, just try to kind of work it uh, work it loose remember lefty loosey righty tighty I think it's coming, it's going to take quite a while. My brother just got these, do you like them? It's also got teeth at the front here as well. Where are these from, Paul? Japan. Japan. You, can, you can buy them anywhere. And they've got teeth at the front here, so if you want to remove like rusty screws and stuff, then you can grip that way as well. They feel quite nice. They've got fantastic grip when you do that. They have, yeah. Took, took a rusty screw out the other day with it. Okay. How much were these? They're not cheap, they're about 20 quid. Are they? Feel nice. Yeah. Right, okay, so just, uh, just in case you're not aware, a Phillips screwdriver, can you see here, it's got basically four points. So it's a crosshead screwdriver, but if you look, and it's just four points. But now if you look at a posi, is it called a posi drive? It, posi drive, yes. Posi it's, drive. It's, it's a, yes. Is this one here. So there's a little bit of white filler or something in there. But if you can have a look at the difference, you can see we've still got a crosshead. But if you look closely, can you see it's also got another set of teeth in between the main four. So just look there, there's a little point there, point there, point there, and point there. So that's a posi drive. I'm not sure whether you can actually, can you tell the difference when it comes to the screws? Yes you can, when you look at them carefully enough. If it's just a straight cross, it's a Phillips. Generally speaking, anything that comes from China, the Far East, Japan, will be still used, will use Phillips. They never really got into Posi. Anything that comes from Europe, or I uh, believe America, will be using Posi. Right, okay. And you can often use a, a Phillips in a Posi drive and get away with it, but you can't generally use a Posi in a Phillips because the extra little doesn't go deep bits enough. 
keep pushing it out. So it keeps canning out all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I suppose a posi screw would have would it look slightly more star shaped because you've got the cross and then you're also going to have a little indentation in between each of the uh, the bits that's not on the cross. If that makes so sense. So you're going to have like a, a, a smaller star within the larger st four pointed star within the larger four pointed star. Yeah. access to it. Excellent. So what we can do now is we can have a look at the bottom of this board and we can see whether anything doesn't look right or not. Uh, and also we want to check the on and off switch don't we? Maybe we should do the on and off switch first. Maybe. So let's undo this little board here. Annoyingly they're all joined together by soldered ribbon cables so if you have a look, if you have a look here and you see that this board's joined to this board by a ribbon cable, but it's one that's already soldered in place, so it kind of makes it hard to work on. Is that because this is a bit older, Vince? I don't know, or is it just cheaper? All right, okay. Maybe it is because it's older. Yeah. I'd say it's be about 10, 12. Where's the pat test label? It's from 2007 or something. Or... Yeah, yeah, I would say this would be from. Early to 2000s, maybe. Yeah. We might be able to see there might be uh, something on the yeah. circuit board that says the date. Why has that got a washer on it, that one? Don't know why that one's got a washer. So if you just. Right, okay, so this is the little LED for power, and this is the switch here. It looks absolutely fine. I don't think it is an issue here because otherwise, I'm sure this LED would probably be red for when it's maybe on standby and then green when you press the button but just in case it's always off and only comes on when you press it we can test this switch by just going across these two points here and pressing the button then when we press it we should have continuity right paul will you uh, press put your hands here and press the button just this one here Do that again. That should be going off there, shouldn't it? But also. Ah, hold on. Right, let go. No, that's the well, same. Yeah, 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 the same you across this old track. I'm pressing it right. There's only one button here, isn't it? Yeah. Well, right, okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Let's just do the other ones to see if the other buttons work when we press them. So let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Okay, and the next one. Okay, any more? Okay. I can't quite get my hands in there, so I've got to put them more vertical. Okay, sorry. Okay, can you reach there? I can, yeah. Okay, well, let's go back onto this one. Maybe I didn't press hard enough on it. Right. Excellent. Right, okay, well, that's uh, promising. But then you How do we repair it though? Well, we could always swap it for another one, or we could maybe, uh, it might not need repair, we might be able to just spray contact cleaner on it, or I've yeah. got this thing called uh, Deoxit, yeah. and that might make it work. So we can get the board out to make it easier to work on, or is that really going to be awkward? Well, yeah, they all, oh, they're, they're all they're soldered together anyway. Soldered. Yeah. yeah. So this is the switch that we're worried about here. I'm not saying it is it, but it doesn't do anything when you press it. The reason I'm not kind of over the moon is because I still think that the LED, do you reckon it's a colour, you can't tell it's a colour change LED, can you? Because it's the circuit that would change the, would a colour change LED have different filaments in it? I don't know anything about them. Sorry, I've got a microphone, but I, I, I don't know. Now Actually, Paul, looking at that, there's just, one, there's just one contact in there. So if there's only one contact, surely then it has to be just either on or off. Yeah, it, it, if, if it was green and red, wouldn't it have two filaments on the inside? Uh, I don't know if it works that way, Vince. No? No. Oh, what you mean, maybe it's a different current makes different colours yes, or something? Yes, yeah, oh, I see what you mean. in a different way as opposed to like a light bulb. Yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. The only yeah. thing we could do is if we could always bridge it, could we do anything to just bridge across there? Well, we could, and then see well, if it works. We're only right with a battery, so put a screwdriver across and see if it comes alive. The only thing is we've got to plug everything back in. 
we have got to plug everything back in and we're not going to... Do we have to plug everything back in though? We don't know what everything does, do Because we? that's going to be for the CD and stuff. Yeah. This is for the speakers. Yeah. I think that we'll we should it. still have power. Oh, but we're not going to hear it. We might have to plug the power back in, obviously. We have to plug the power back into yeah. here. Yeah. Let's do it with batteries. Yeah, we'll do it with batteries, because just for safety. Yeah, and then we'll, and we'll short across here. across there. Because and see if it comes alive. Because all that, that switch, all that does is join these two contacts together. Yeah? Mm. Why, though, has it got four contacts on it? I think it's an off-the-shelf switch, because they're joined at the back. Because they're joined the back. Right, fine. Yeah, that might be, so it could, it could operate two circuits at once. Yeah, because yeah. you just think it would be more expensive to have this switch rather than a uh, one with just two contacts. It could it. be stability as well, obviously. You've got four things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it might be. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Sure. There does look to be a little bit of corrosion here, don't you think? Or do you reckon that was just like flux from the factory or something? Flux from the factory. Because if, that, if it was, maybe this switch has had, for example, a slightly damp finger, maybe turning it on and off all the time. It could do, and that maybe that affected the switch or you know, yeah. something got spilt on it. Yeah. Right, we're just going to pop the battery back in the back. Holy water. Everything. Let's put everything back to where it should be. Yeah. Mm. Right, the only problem is we're not going to be able to see anything, are we? With the LED. We'll see the LED come on, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So should, what? What should we use? Just a screwdriver? Yeah. Uh, tweezers. Here we go. These things here. These contacts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You do the honors. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. So now we have to press. Oh no. So should the, light... the lights come on? Oh, the light, oh, excellent. Right, let's show that on the camera. So my hands are in the way a bit. Right, watch this. You can see the red light start to glow. I do it now. There you go. Hold on, your thumb's in the way. There we go. Can you see? I'll put a script on. It's easier. Let's get it. <laughs> there you go. Red light's on. Yeah? Yeah, hold on. One second. Let's move the... Oh, I can do it this way. One second. Yeah. Sorry about my thumb. It's because it's so bright in here. There we go, on, and take it off. Oh, it stays on for a while. Oh, it stays on. I suppose it takes a, t a bit of time to discharge. So you can see it now glowing away. Well, I suppose we've, oh no, hold on. It's on now because there's power. Is that not right? Yes, but I have to do it again to turn it off because it's it's, it's an Im it's a impulse switch. Oh, okay, so right now everything you reckon is on? On, right. off. Oh, it's on again. There, off, let go. There, there we go. go, off. It's an impulse ah, switch. So it's there not, are turns on a yeah. string. So it's not a switch that just toggles on and off. It's, is it called a mo moment, m moment, I don't know momentary? Impulse. I think they're, they're the impulse. Okay, I'm yeah. not really sure. So, so basically when you press it, yeah. it's obviously telling some, would it be a relay or something to keep on? That's it, it latches. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a latch, it's a latching. Switch. Well, it's not really a latching switch because the latching switch we lose power. I think it's a latching switch. Yeah. Right. Okay. Major note: when it comes to electronics, it might be different. Or something different, different, different anyway. Different. Yeah. different terminology. Right. So, yeah. brilliant news because now that says to me that I think it is just a faulty switch, which was is nice because it's going to be a whole lot easier than fault finding all this. So, I think what we're going to do is two things: we can do. We can either unsolder it and solder it onto another. Uh, switch here because maybe some of these other ones I haven't actually looked at the front of this but maybe for example one might be mega boost and for example the lady that owns this might never ever ever need to use mega boost or it might be some kind of Dolby or something like that but I think what w would be nice is if we could clean the switch up to get it to work I suppose what would be a clever thing to do would be we know that this one's probably gone faulty because that's the one you press all the time to turn it on. So maybe, for example, wet fingers has been on it. So we can clean it, and it might well work fine, but it might be a clever idea to swap it over to another switch anyway that's not used much. So for example, if we look at the front, and like I said, if this is Mega Boost, I'm making that up, then that might be a better one to swap to here because it probably means it's hardly been used. And then if we fix up the switch, that's great, but then let's put it on the Mega Boost one. At least then it means that the switch that's on the on and off is new. Do you think that's probably a... Yeah, no, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, okay. So, but first of all, let's try to get this switch working again. So, I think I'm going to spray it to begin with to try and clean it out. And then I have got something called Deoxit, which is supposed to be very good at making uh, making contacts. Uh, maybe IPA, to, first of all. Do you think I, I scrub it with IPA just in case there is a bit of corrosion? I suppose we could do. 
Yeah, I suppose we do. I can we just dip, dip, dip the board in IPA without work now? Uh, we, we, we can do, it's just you're going to waste a bit of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do, I've got a little brush that we can clean it with. Okay. But let's get a few bits sorted. Okay, so to begin with, we're just going to clean it. Flooded. Just flooded. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to put loads of IPA all over that switch, get right in there, right into the bottom and stuff. Keep pressing it as we go. We'll try to, try to free it up. Afterwards, I'm going to use some of this on it to spray right in there because there's an aerosol so it can get right in. And then we'll put deoxit at the end. And then annoyingly, we've looked at the top here and all these buttons are really going to be in use because we've got tape, tuner, band, CD. But over the other side, I'll show you in a minute, but over the other side of it here, we do have something called 3D sound. We've also got memory. So I think we're going to take one of the switches off the other side because the CD, tape, tuner and band are all going to be used. We were thinking about taking the switch off bands, but for example, the, the lady might want to listen to AM as well as FM, in which case then that button will be pressed. Now, obviously, we're hoping to get this button working, but I just don't think if the corrosion's got in there that it's going to be as reliable as when it was new. So that's the reason we want to swap it, because otherwise we might find that a few months down the line the same fault happens again. We'll give it a quick test out of curiosity. We'll still do all the other bits. Can I test it from the top? I should be able to, shouldn't I? Will you do the honours of, uh... yay, excellent, but we still do all the other bits anyway, just, uh, just in case. I'm going to use this stuff here, a lot of people swear by this, it is expensive, but as you can see it cleans, rejuvenates and protects all metal electrical contacts, so I've had a lot of messages about this, so uh, yeah, I'm going to just Put a couple of drops in there and hopefully it will do what it says it does. Is that expensive, Vince? I think that was about £8 or £9. Pounds. That's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot for a tiny bit, but I'm hoping... Does this come all the way from America? I know it's made in America, but can you get I... it over here, is it? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I got it from Amazon. I think it was next day delivery. All right. You can buy bigger ones. Yeah. That obviously is a better value, but yeah. I'm hoping that will last a long time anyway. Yeah. Right, okay, it looks like it's evaporated off, so let's put a couple of drops of this in. I think I'm just going to go in through... Have you used this for stuff before, Vince? Only the once. Yeah. I think I'm just going to go in through the uh, black thing at the top. There we go, let that, that seep into it a little bit. And then we can keep pressing that button to try to get it to work its way in again. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that now. So let's give that one more try. Hopefully it's still working. No. Oh no, so it was working with the IPA and now it's not working now. Oh yes it is, hold on. So what's, oh, maybe I wasn't on this right. Oh, hold on, let me go on the inside. Maybe I was shorting it against the bottom or something. It's a bit hit and miss, isn't it? Is it to do with how hard you press it? Yes. How hard you press it? No, I'm pressing really softly now. Oh. Unless it just takes a while to work its way in. Might be. Well, maybe it's actually evaporating off. Ah. Uh, we can't actually take these apart, can we? They're uh, like plastic, they're plastic welded up the I, top, I, I, aren't they? I can't see that that would be successful. Unless we were, and then to try to melt the plastic again afterwards. But, uh, you, you, you need, it's to see what you're doing as well, isn't it, though? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, let's leave that. Because what we need to do is we need to take off the board from the other side here, because 100% I do want to swap the switches, switch over. Uh, let's let that dry off because it probably is still of there's probably IPA still evaporating from the inside of that because we put a lot on there uh, So let's uh, let it all evaporate off and then we'll test it again because maybe the switch isn't going to work again So let's take off this side now while that's drying Right now the reason I think we're going to do the 3d switch here is if you look closely It's got a little light on it. So I'm thinking when you press this this bit here is going to light up 
I could also, I mean, the volume's going to be used a lot. I could also use, like, the memory or the repeat. It's just that, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how this works. I don't want to spend all day learning because it's not my, uh, it's not my device. So I'm thinking if we swap the switch for the 3D sound, at least we know that when we press it, if the light comes on, we know the switch is working. If I was to change it for memory, then I'm going to have to rely on this LCD working, and I don't know if it does, or I'm going to have to read up on how memory works. So that's, I think, the reason why we're going to go for the 3D sound, if the switch looks the same. Okay, so good news is the switches look exactly the same. So we're just going to test this switch now with the multimeter to make sure it is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Sorry, I'm not on it. There we go. Okay, so definitely happy that that switch is working. So I'm going to get the soldering iron out and the solder sucker, remove that switch from there, and then we'll test this one again in a few minutes once it's fully dried and then swap them over. Can you work on the floor? Yeah. Okay. Right, I'm ready to unsolder it now. I'm just making a little note of where I have to put the next switch back on. So if you have a look, I've got the terminals this side here and this side here because I'm not sure if it would fit the other way around or not. But I'm just making a note of that there so I can put the next one on the exact same way. So I'm just going to use the soldering iron and the solder sucker. Right, okay, so that's the good switch off. And now we just have to take off the bad switch. Well, actually, let's test the bad switch one more time and then swap them over. Right, so this is a bad switch now. It's been about three or four minutes. It should have all evaporated off. So let's just try it. Uh, let's try it now. Yeah. Do you know what? I think it's going to be okay. And I think it's going to be okay for 3D boost. I can't see there being a massive problem with that. So let's unsolder this one and swap them over. If anybody's wondering, I've got my soldering iron set to 300 degrees C. So it's uh, probably a bit on the hot side, but it's melting nice and quick. is now the faulty switch which hopefully won't be faulty okay, any longer separate, well we'll put it straight on here now okay yeah right so let's put the faulty switch straight onto here remember I made a, a mental note of which way around it was so the contacts go that side there right so let's put a little bit of solder on here Yeah, that's soldered back on now. It all went nice and smoothly. I'm happy with that. We can test that afterwards. Let's just put this switch on this side now. A nice technique. Thank you, Paul. Did you sell it good? But you've done it wrong. <laughs> okay, so they're both soldered up now, so let's get our multimeter, check the switches are working on both of them, and then I think we can put this together and see what's happening with it. Right, Paul, would you do the honours? Okay, that looks good, and now let's go on to the bad switch over here. Excellent. Right, let's get this back together. So we're just going to be fast forwarding through the whole thing again, because obviously this is going to take quite some time.
you're wondering why there's a washer like we were on this bit here, I think it's because if you look at these ones here, that's clear off the tracks. If the one here is only in contact with one track screwed into plastic, so even if it was to kind of like rub against the track and cause a short, it's not going to go anywhere. But with this one, in theory, it could like short between possibly two of those tracks there. So it looked like they just put this on here just to stop it shorting against it. Right now, just before we put it back together, I know some of you like to see the chips and stuff like that. So let's uh, just show you them so you can see. I mean, I don't even know how old this is, so if somebody can read the chips, they'd probably be able to see how old it is, maybe via that one there. I'm going to take a guess. I'm thinking, I'm thinking around 2005, but that's just purely a guess. Now, with this circuit board here, if you have a look, it's quite interesting because this is all through, looks to be all through whole components, apart from this chip here, which is going to be like surface mount on the other side of the board. So uh, the circuit board looks kind of old because nowadays what would happen is these wouldn't be through hole, it would be surface mount, so there would be pads. So on this one, the tracks are all on the other side and there's holes drilled through, the components go through and they're soldered onto the tracks on the other side. But nowadays it's mostly surface mount. And what it means is, it means that the, the, they don't go through the board, they actually sit on the board and there's pads on the board that you solder onto. And what it means is, it means that you can have one lot of circuit board doing one thing on the other side, and then on the other side, you can have a completely different circuit board. Well, as you can see on this one, they're both doing the same thing, it's only really one circuit board. So it's just a bit of a space saving. And then what makes it even more interesting is, and I don't know anything about this, but it sounds fascinating, on newer boards like the Nintendo Switch, you will have a top layer, a bottom layer, and then you will have numerous layers sandwiched in between. So for example, you might have a seven layer board. So what will happen is, instead of having all the traces crammed together on one thing, it's all nicely designed and you will have the traces on one layer, and then you'll have the traces on another layer doing something else, the traces on the third layer feeding other components. So it's like kind of all different circuit boards stepped together. And then you have these things called vias that are basically little holes that go through to certain layers on the board. So you might have one via here that I believe might go to, for example, the third layer, and then you'll have a via somewhere else that might go to the fourth layer. And that's what connects up the components on the top and bottom layers to the, the layers in the sandwich in the middle of the board. So that's what I believe anyway, but I think it's kind of amazing how far it's come. Now this was probably a relatively cheap device when it came out, so maybe the technology is a bit older than some of the other stuff. But it's still just amazing to see how kind of spaced out this all is. And then on modern stuff now, how compact. If you think about an iPhone now, how much they get into such a small amount. And that's because they use multi-layer boards. And obviously, the components are much smaller as well. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Let me just uh, get back to putting this back together. found in the corner here it's the belt so if you have a look here the belt for the I mean I'm presuming this is the tape because the CD itself would be the motor driving it straight away so it looks like there's a belt here for this one here but there should be another belt going around the top here going around this motor in fact here's another bit of the belt so obviously the tape doesn't work so we're gonna have to try and get a belt around there I do have I think I've brought some with me. Remember, I'm at my brother's house now, but that's the size of the belt that we need, like that. Okay, well, that's interesting to see. So, obviously, it's, uh, it's more than just a power problem, but we should be able to just wrap that round. That should be easy enough. I think we'll still... Oh, here we go, there's one. Yeah. There's yeah. one here. It's the missing screw. I'm going to try and find a belt now before we go any further, because we might need to take this apart to be able to get that round. Try and find a matching belt. I bought all these for my Walkman fixes, so they might not be quite as thick as this one here, but it should uh, it should be okay. Very quick uh, look here. That one looks to be about the same size as this one here. Kind of looks to be about the same circumference. I think that one's going to be just fine. So the quality of the rubber looks a little bit thinner than the one that's already there, but very little in it. Just a fraction, a fraction of a millimetre. I think that will work just fine. There we go. 
side. I'm just grabbing it from the other side of the pulley there and uh, dropped it in. So now, there we go. I think that's going to work now. Yeah, it looks like it's going round. It looks like it is. So it's definitely going around the motor there. Just zoom in to show. Oh, there you go. You can see. There you go. Can you see the white pulley on the motor? Well, my brother's just pointed out that in my set I've got a flexible thing and uh, you know, I've never used it before. But look at it. There was me struggling earlier and all I had to do was that. How good is that? It actually turns. Oh, it's got a little Yeah, it actually collar. turns the, uh, the end bit itself, the driver. Mm. That's fantastic. It's all back together eventually. That was the, the hardest part of this was taking it apart and putting it back together again. We've got no screws left over, which is a great thing. So now let's plug this in and see if it works, and we can test out the tape, test out a few other things as we well. Test it on batteries as well. While we've got test it, it on batteries. We'll test it on the tape. We'll plug it in. We'll test everything. Do you need me to get a cassette tape? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's just turn it on to begin with. Let's see if we're. Uh, let's see if we've got any luck with it. Right, I'll let you do the honours. Yay, red light. There we go. And the display works as well. So I can't, uh, because of copyright, play anything. I will just do it for a couple of seconds. So let's tune it in. Is this on? 88, well, radio 2 maybe. Yeah, so let's go to Trish. tuner. Trish. Which, how do we do it? Maybe this one? Does it find itself? That'll be radio 2. Here we go. Right, definitely working. Yeah, right, let's do the... Uh, yeah, that's fine. You've got to be careful. Careful, careful. Bands. Right. Now let's do AM. Do you know any AM channels? Yeah. Uh, capital Gold. What's Capital Gold on? 58. Here we go. But not enough. Uh, you find 1548. Well, there you go. We've got one here. There we go. I won't get done for copyright right there. Perfect. So AM and FM work. Now let's just see if 3D stereo sound works. Exactly, because the personal is not Which it does, the lights come on. So it looks like that switch is actually working fine. There you go, you can see that. Well, let's turn that off. So let's go to tape. So let's now get a tape and see if the tape works. Have you got a CD? I'll get a CD as well. Yeah, we'll have to only play it for a second though, Paul, because... So it's a bit of a result so far, isn't it? 100 Christmas hits. <laughs> okay. Right, CD, we've got 100 Christmas hits, so let's try that to begin with. Looks like the tape on this hasn't been used in a long time anyway. And let's go to play. There you go, track one. Track two. Perfect. Can't beat a bit of Christmas. Right, okay, so we're just gonna get a tape now and see if that's working. Look at that, that is my brother's collection. Jimmy Nail. Jimmy Nail. <laughs> that was a Vita same pet, wasn't it? From the uh, mid 80s. Brilliant. I take it he was an actor first before he was a singer. Yes. <laughs> right, let's uh, see if this is going to work. Oh, I can hear something. Let's fast forward it. There we go. Right, okay, in my opinion, it sounds a bit slow, but I'm not really au fait with the work of Jimmy Nail. My I've brother got, seems got, to got think... Okay, know? my brother seems to think it sounds okay. So Right, okay, just put a bit of REM on it. Now, I don't want to spend ages on this tape thing because we weren't even told that this was wrong, so it's probably never used. To me, it does sound a bit, a little bit slurry, but I don't know if it's a speed thing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean the tape head and also clean the little rollers down here because there's something called, I think it's wow and flutter, and I'm wondering if that's what it is because it kind of sounds a little bit like... <laughs> 
I'm not even going to do the sound effect, but I'm sorry I can't play it to you, but if I do, it could get flagged for copyright. But I'm wondering if the sound that, that I'm hearing is something called wow and flutter. So I'm going to clean these things down here, and uh, if the little rollers were very dusty, maybe it isn't bringing the tape along at a constant speed. So I'm just going to use a little bit of IPA on it. Do you want cotton bud? Yeah, I've got one here. Oh. Yeah. We also have to sort out the remote control as well. Yeah. Right, so cotton bud with a bit of IPA on it, and I'm just going to clean the uh, tape head. Just going to dry it off a little bit with the other side. And I'm just going to clean these little rollers. Actually, there's a fair bit of dust in there. I'm going to give everything a bit of a clean. Ah, look at one of the rollers. The rubber rollers has a crack in it. So, have a look. There you go, you can see the crack right on top. So maybe that isn't going to help it. Oh, well, there's nothing we can do about that. I don't even uh, I don't even know if you would be able to get spares for this, but if you could, it's not going to be. It really wouldn't be cost effective. I suppose the rubber perishes over the years. That is a shame. As I say, I don't know if that would affect it. I'm thinking it shouldn't be like that. Everything does look quite dusty. Right, okay, we're gonna let that dry off. In the meantime, when we're waiting for that to dry, I'm just gonna put batteries in, make sure the batteries are working on it, and then we can worry about this remote control, because I'm thinking with this remote control, if we were to change it to tuner. Oh, there we go, it does work, look. So, no. Tuner does work, look. It, tape, it goes off, tuner works. Maybe the light doesn't come in. Maybe, well, if it's infrared, does it, well, you, you even see? That's that proceed through the camera. Oh, you yeah, see yeah, it when you watch it on video, can't you? Hold on. Well, I can't personally see anything in there, but it's, look, it's working. Because when we go to band, oh, it was working, hold on. Oh, sorry, tape here, one second. So, tuner. Tape, CD, it's working. Oh. Right, okay, uh, not sure if it's Jimmy now having a few drinks or not, but the REM, I think, sounds okay. So we put Man on the Moon on, I'm just going to play for two seconds. <laughs> That is good enough. I think it sounds okay to me. Right, so now the mains lead is unplugged here, and uh, yeah, it's working via batteries. So all we're gonna do now is, we've tried it with the batteries and everything like that, so it's batteries, mains, it works on batteries and mains. All we're gonna do now is clean up the contacts in this uh, remote control, and job is done evidence of leakage here before so because these are alkaline batteries then you need to use an acid to kind of neutralize it now i'm not going to go crazy on it because i don't want all this white vinegar to go inside all i'm going to do is spray a little bit onto here i'm just going to tap it on the terminals there just to try to stop any further corrosion but if i'm honest with you i don't think that's going to further corrode anyway it doesn't actually seem to be that bad so i'm just going to put some on there and that's not enough now to leak through into it And then we're just going to use the fiberglass pen just to rough it up a bit more. Right, so that side looks perfect to me down there. I don't think there's an issue. Maybe just on that negative terminal there. And then this one here just needs a bit of a scrape. And then afterwards I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of IPA on it just to uh, get rid of the vinegar. and we'll just let that dry. Okay, so that is it all finished. So basically, it was all just because of that tiny little switch, a little bit of corrosion in there, but I think that was quite a nice fault find, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So now if we put it to uh, tuner, 
you can see that it's now um, working. Certainly not on dating apps, but there are. I mean, I mean, I've well, got you, plenty of friends who are in mixed well, race relationships, as I'm sure you have. Hmm. In fact, your social circle because please. there we go. 3D sounds definitely working, and you can now use this button here to turn it on and off, or you can turn it off from the remote control. Hmm. There we go. Just do a quick. Just notice a little bit of staining down here, so we can just get rid of that with a bit of IPA. There. So hopefully she will be well happy with that because it all seems to be all properly working like it did before so uh, yeah I think that was a, a nice fix really enjoyed it and it was quite quite nice to see a simple fault but a fault that renders something useless and a lot of people would have thrown this one away and uh, now that that's fixed we've swapped the switch over who knows it might last for another five or ten years with no problem whatsoever so uh, yeah really really good happy with this one so if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and uh, yeah, hopefully I will be doing more trying to fix videos with my brother Paul in the future. So it's bye from me and it's bye from Paul. Bye. -bye. See you soon. Take care. Bye now.